when Markovnikov formulated his rule, he could use it to predict the major products, but he didn't know what a carbocation was, and uh, he didn't know much about the mechanism. So we can make a, a another we can have another understanding of Markovnikov's rule and why it works the way it does, and it goes back to our old friend the carbocation and ranking their stabilities. Because the first thing that happens in the mechanism that we saw on a previous slide was that the hydrogen adds to one of the two carbons where the double bond is. One of those bonds of the two in the double bond forms a bond to hydrogen. And so we can imagine these two possible intermediates, uh, two different carbocations. The first one would be expected to form in preference to the second one because it is secondary and we learned that those things are more stable than primary ones. Primary carbocations don't like to form. And so in the second step when the bromide comes in, or if it's HCl, the chloride, uh, we expect it to be at the number two position and, and form a product based on this first intermediate uh, because we've made the more stable carbocation. We don't get much of the one bromo or one chloro product because that would involve this less stable carbocation forming. And so this rule at the bottom is a more modern way of stating Markovnikov's rule. Uh, but if all we're trying to do is predict the major product, as long as you can apply the rule, then you can, I guess, remember it in, in, with whatever sentence works best. One reason we know in chemistry that carbocations are involved is because, just as we had seen before, uh, sometimes rearrangements can occur. And when the uh, product is, is not predictable based on the carbon skeleton we start with, we kind of assume that carbocations must have been involved and that some rearrangement had occurred. So we, we saw a little bit of this in Chapter 4 as, as well. Um, sometimes you can initially make a carbocation that while it has some stability, this one at the bottom here is secondary, if we have one of these hydride shifts, we can turn it into a tertiary one. And we end up making, more than anything else, this uh, molecule you see on the right here. 60% of the product puts that chlorine on the second carbon from the right. That implies that it immediately was preceded by the corresponding carbocation below. And without that rearrangement, this other product is what we would expect. Uh, we only get 40% of it, though. And as I told you back in Chapter 4, we can't always predict when rearrangements occur. Um, but if they do, we can uh, make some sense out of why a given product uh, is the way it is, why it's perhaps a little bit unpredictable. And again, this is considered some evidence for the existence of these carbocations in the first place. Well, it's possible to do the opposite of what Markovnikov uh, would observe. And in fact, this um, phenomenon is just about as old as the Markovnikov rule itself. Sometimes, under certain conditions, you can get just the opposite of, of what Markovnikov would predict. So let's say we started with one butene here, and we wanted to make the one uh, bromo product. Well, we've seen before that uh, Markovnikov's rule predisposes us to put the bromine at the number two carbon. But in this second reaction, we've got just the opposite effect. And the key here, here as it says, uh, peroxides. Uh, that is an H nu down here. That's a Greek letter nu, that funny looking V. And that stands for ultraviolet light. And what ultraviolet light and peroxides both can do is create radicals. Uh, peroxides have uh, an oxygen-oxygen single bond and such molecules can be easily split into two uh, halves, and each half has an unpaired electron. That's what a radical is. Um, and if you shine ultraviolet light on molecules like HBr, they can also split in that manner. And so if we purposefully add these special conditions, then we can uh, cause Markovnikov's rule to happen in reverse which is nice because it gives us some control over where that incoming bromine ends up. 